Welcome, welcome to the Revolution of One live stream. It's another Wednesday with Kamau and I, and I am excited about today's guest. Today, we are chatting with Unati Kwaza. This is going to be such a good conversation. So Unati is a businesswoman who devotes a lot of time to promoting um, women's enterprise in South Africa. She's also a former board member for the, found, the Free Market Foundation, also a former council member for the Institute of Race Relations, a lot of experience in business and politics, helping people fight for freedom, helping people think critically and creatively about how to make the world freer. So we're going to talk about what her stance is on politics, what's going on in South Africa, her opinions on the lockdown, uh, Black Lives Matter, Black Enterprise, all of it. Yunati, welcome to the live stream. Thanks for having me, guys. Um, thank you. Um, yeah, as I was saying to you earlier, uh, we, we're in, in the middle of winter in South Africa, and uh, it's pretty cold and rainy uh, in Cape Town because this is our rainy season. And uh, it's good to be on your show. It's good to have you here. And I, I know it's pretty late there, so I appreciate you you taking the time to, to do this live, especially. Yeah, so yeah. You, it's, uh, just after after 6 p.m. Yeah, so I've had a chance to take a look at a number of your different podcasts. You've appeared on a lot of libertarian shows, a lot of conservative shows. You write a lot of posts about capitalism. Um, you, you've got a lot of really interesting, provocative tweets. And, and, and so I, I wanna dive into some of your specific opinions on, on things, but I wanna start generally with your political philosophy. I, I love for you to just share with us what is your political philosophy? What are your beliefs concerning the role of government? What makes a society free? And, and how did you develop the way of thinking that you have now? Right. Um, I grew up uh, in the, I'll say during apartheid in South Africa. And um, it was an interesting time uh, to, to, to be alive. And then in 1994, as we all know, that uh, we uh, we had our first uh, democratic elections in South Africa, and um, a lot of ch of things have changed since then. Um, I, I believe in uh, free markets. I believe in uh, I mean the very first. Uh, I mean at the top of everything that I value in life is individual liberty, and uh, freedom of speech, uh, and um, yeah. And, and here in South Africa, it's very, we have a very diverse society. Uh, you, you know what happened with apartheid and everything else. And so we have a lot of uh, different races. And uh, from time to time, there are uh, uh, clashes, especially on social media. Um, I think it's mainly because people just don't understand each other. And um, I believe that my ro the role that I play on, on social media is to just make people see that um, there's nothing special about one's race. Uh, it's just a, a, a small percentage of what makes a human being to be who they are. Um, a lot of what makes you who you are is uh, your individuality, uh, where you come from, and uh, your, your, your experiences in life. And so uh, I refuse to judge people based on their skin color. And uh, so that's what uh, makes me who I am. And obviously, I'm a, a strong proponent for of, uh, free markets and, and capitalism because, uh, as we all know, uh, in Africa, the reason why we have so many financial problems economically and all that is because uh, our leaders have not really embraced capitalism and all that it can bring uh, to society. So um, we, we, we have a lot of uh, uh, leaning towards socialism. And uh, unfortunately, that's why we are where we are. That's why from time to time we carry uh, the begging bowl to the West or the US or, or, or even China to, to find funds. It's because we are not running our economies well and uh, we, we don't want uh, to, to embrace capitalism in its full, uh, uh, I would say, glory. Even though, uh, you know, when we say capitalism in South Africa, it's like it's a swear word. And yet, um, I mean, what else is there? Socialism is definitely not going to take us where we want to be. Uh, we have uh, the highest uh, uh, numbers of young people who are outside of jobs. They don't have work to do. 
um, people graduate from university or college and uh, they struggle to find jobs in South Africa. And uh, those who are brave enough to start jobs like myself struggle because of the policies that uh, the country has adopted over the years. So um, that's, that's the space that I'm playing in. And um, I hope that along the way, I'm educating and changing minds. Um, that's what I want to do. And, and Nazi, you, you do that. I was going to say, you, Nazi, you are, um, from everything that I've learned, you, you're very passionate about entrepreneurship. And so I, a lot of our audience are entrepreneurs. They're people who think entrepreneurially um, so could you kind of talk to um, what came first for you? Was it the desire uh, to be an entrepreneur and to be independent or was it uh, the, the fascination with capitalism and how you saw it in, unfold in, in your world? I, I grew up in a home with a grandmother who, 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 who had never worked for anyone else in, his, in her life. And so she had, she had always been uh, self-employed. She sold a lot of stuff. She sold meat. She sold. Uh, uh, she would make traditional beer, and uh, back in the day, and she would sell that. She made clothes. Uh, she had a sewing machine. So she, there was always a lot of entrepreneurial activities uh, around the home. And uh, my mother also, even though she was a professional nurse, but she was always selling something else because. Uh, we've always believed that uh, there's, I mean, there's always more that you can you can attain in life. Yeah, it's, you're not, it's not about just waking up in the morning, going to your nine to five job, and then coming back home and just lounging around. So there was always something extra that you can you could do. So when I finished college, I studied uh, food technology uh, at college, and when I finished, uh, I started working. Just when I started working, I was also selling. Uh, I'm sure you know uh, uh, Avon products um, mm -hmm. because uh, they are quite. It's quite a, a popular company even in South Africa. I started selling Avon. Um, that was around 2000, and um, I mean I, I've never stopped. So I worked a little while in the food industry until 2009, where I left and I decided let me go it alone and just do what I want to do with my time. Because um, entrepreneurship is not is not the easiest thing, but I like the fact that I have freedom to to manage my time the way that I want. I don't have a boss who is standing over me, who's just watching everything that I do. So I like that, and I can pursue other interests. I'm I'm always I'm curious as a human being, and um, I, I always want to learn. Um, and I, I, I never studied economics uh, or politics, but. Um, those are things that I've come to understand better because I read a lot. And um, I, I, I watch, uh, I mean, a lot of informative. Uh, that's how I came to know about TK Coleman uh, from Free. And um, uh, your, your YouTube uh, uh, videos are one of those things. I mean, they are short and sharp and uh, quite informative. So I always say uh, whenever I find something on, on, and I like the power the powerful message in the the revolution of one that you talk about, because uh, most times we think that uh, we need a group of people to change the world, and yet we, we just you just need to I need to change myself, and then um, what happens after that is um, it can easily spread to my community, it can easily spread then to to my country, and uh, yeah that's that's uh, those are the things that make uh, I suppose that make me tick and uh, that make me want to contribute more to society. You Nazi, we had Stephen A. Hart on the show and he hosts uh, the Trailblazers FM podcast. And one of the topics he talked about was how black success stories matter. And he interviews a lot of black entrepreneurs. And when we asked him why that's so important to him, he said, because, you know, when you look at what the media is telling you, you kind of see a different depiction. And you know, when he looked at the people in his neighborhood, the people in, in physical space, when we get out there and talk to real people, that there are so many black role models, so many black intellectuals, educators, entrepreneurs that no one knows about, nobody talks about. And he wanted to share these people with the world so that more black people can see this and say, okay, this is possible for me. And I know this is something that you've talked about a lot, you've tweeted about a lot. I, I wanna hear you talk about that. What is it 
that makes the success philosophy, the freedom philosophy, seem to be such a complex thing for black folks? And, and, and what, what can you say to that for, for those of us who may come from backgrounds or feel like we're dealing with all sorts of odds and obstacles that make it harder for us to create wealth? Yeah, I think it's, uh, it starts with education. Here in South Africa, unfortunately, we, uh, from 1994, we thought that uh, the, the quality of public education would uh, improve, but uh, it, it has actually gone worse. And uh, when our grade five learners were, were tested about two years ago, they found that 78% of them cannot read uh, uh, with comprehension in any language, whether it's their mother tongue or English or, or other languages. They just cannot read to, to, to understand what they are reading. So uh, it always starts with education. What are we teaching? Uh, what are we teaching in our schools? How are we preparing our young learners to, 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 be, to be job creators instead of uh, graduating and then sitting at home? Uh, waiting for someone to employ you how do we improve uh, uh, the quality of education uh, uh, so that uh, i mean the the i mean for me it started at home with with my my late grandmother but for someone else it might start in primary school if the school uh, uh, values entrepreneurship uh, and teaches uh, young people what is what is it to be an entrepreneur what 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 does it mean to run a business what does it mean to be self-employed and to create jobs and to create wealth for yourself? Um, so education all the way. And um, also the fact, I mean, if young people, I think also you need as a young person to to always be aware of who are you surrounding, who are you surrounding yourself with? Um, are these people uh, adding value to, to your life or uh, are these people just passing time and fooling around with uh, people who don't, you, you know, you're not getting anything from them that will grow you as a person? Who are you surrounding yourself with? And what are you watching? Whether you watch on television or whatever you watch, what are you watching? Does it add value to your life? Um, so most times I feel that the media is not portraying the right messages that we want for our young people. So take yourself out of that. Uh, don't. Um, I mean, I used to watch news 24-7. Uh, I would uh, uh, analyze everything that I was seeing. But then I realized that, you know what, this is just getting me worked up. And I'm not, I'm not really getting much uh, out of it. How, how, can I, how, how can I use my time? Because now my time is up to me. Like, what do I do? How can I be productive uh, in my, I mean, on a day-to-day -day basis? When I wake up in the morning, what am I going to do today? Uh, am I going to waste all this time uh, uh, watching news and being angry and, and not productive? Or am I going to, I mean, I have a small garden at home. And um, am I going to go to my garden and see, okay, what needs, oh, do I need to remove weeds? Do I need to water the garden and all that? And after that, uh, what am I doing for my customers today? Do I have, uh, I mean, you just plan your day in a way that at the end of the day, you need to know as a person that I did this and that. And, and, and it, it's fulfilling for me to, to, to be productive. So everything is just up to you as, as, as a person really in life. Um, whatever you want, what, whatever changes you want to make, they are up to you. Uh, I don't know about the US, but here in South Africa, people tend to put so much trust in politicians. And uh, when people go to vote uh, at every election, they think that uh, these politicians are going to bring changes in their lives. And uh, more often than not, it's not the case. Politicians just want power for themselves and they just don't want to leave that power. So for them, it becomes a career and nothing else they want to do with their lives. But as a young person, if, if you can know that um, the changes that you want to see in your life depend on you, are you willing to, to sacrifice the time that you need to, to, to see those changes? Are you willing to put the work, put in the work? Because uh, young people just don't want to 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 be self-starters, to 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 surround themselves with people who mot who inspire them. Uh, when I talk about your your videos of uh, the revolution of one uh, TK, um, I mean, there's a lot that people can learn today. We have social media. Uh, how are you using your social media to 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 influence positively? 
how are you using your time uh, uh, that you spend, whether it's Facebook, whether it's Instagram. I'm still new on, on Instagram, so I don't really know much uh, what exactly uh, people are doing. But I mean, you can use, you can learn. Um, you know, when people talk about robots uh, taking over the world, um, uh, they forget that actually, if you as a young person, you are prepared, uh, you've prepared yourself, you've uh, uh, up, you need to just need to up your game and improve your skills so that you are ready for the world of today's work. So, because uh, nowadays, there's a lot of uh, jobs that are falling along the way and uh, you're no longer going to need uh, um, a lot of things. But there are still those uh, uh, careers that need a human touch. But um, if, if you need to improve your digital, how, 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 what, do you, what can you learn about digital marketing, for instance? And you can find all these things online. And um, so it's up to, again, it's up to you uh, uh, to, to, to actually uh, uh, use the time that you spend on the internet to, to, to be productive. And um, I mean, there's just a lot of nonsense on Twitter, as we all know. People don't like, I'm a proponent, I'm a, uh, uh, I, I love free speech and I love talking about it. I realize that there's a lot of people, uh, one of the topics that as you suggested, TK, is um, the, the, the cancel culture that, that is uh, prevalent today uh, in today's media. And um, we're not teaching young people how to debate, how to disagree uh, respectfully with each other. Uh, we, want, we don't want to be offended by anything. And uh, I don't know, we just want, uh, we're just creating young people who are fragile, who, who, who don't want to stand up. Uh, uh, for what they believe. If if someone says something you don't believe in, you just want to shut them up. You, you want them to 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 lose their jobs. That's what cancel culture is all about. So um, I'm 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 about. I mean, there's the, the saying that speech, the antidote to bad speech is not uh, canceling people's speech, but it's more speech. So we need people to talk more. We need people to engage more and uh, meaningfully, of of course. And um, that's how you build a society. You don't ostracize people. You don't uh, make people enemies. Uh, uh, you just uh, engage with everyone that you want uh, to engage with. And uh, even those you don't agree with, you, you just have to engage. Because um, how else? I mean, we come from different backgrounds. That's, that's my thinking on this. We come from different uh, backgrounds. And we have different, we've had different experiences in life. So. The only way to, to enrich ourselves then is to, have, is to engage with each other and uh, agree to disagree on certain issues. But um, more importantly, not to let politicians divide us as people. Because uh, at the end of the day, politicians don't, uh, don't stay with you at your home. You still have your friends, you still have your family. Imagine uh, fighting with your family because you disagree politically. It's ridiculous. <laughs> so, so um, <laughs> Those are the things that uh, uh, mean a lot to me. Wow. There, there, there's so many things, so many good things there. I'm, I'm trying to hang on to these beautiful words you said. You said the antidote to, to bad speech bad. Is, not, yeah. is not to cancel speech, but to give more free speech. Absolutely. I know that you... You're one of those people I see on Twitter. I see you as fearless. You're not afraid to argue. You're not afraid to provoke. You're not afraid to challenge the the, the narrative. And, and you have a lot of followers, so you can't hide. When you say something, thousands of people see it. You have nearly 50,000 followers. How do you deal with that experience of saying, speaking truth, saying what needs to be said, and then someone getting angry at you, someone misunderstanding you? How do you, how do you process that personally? Yeah. So for me, uh, I've, I've realized that um, not everyone's views matter because some people choose to, to, to misinterpret what I'm saying. Uh, for instance, one time uh, I, I was trending one Sunday uh, <laughs> because I had said that uh, black people were better off under apartheid than what you are seeing in South Africa today. So uh, there's I don't I don't know if you have there's something called Black Twitter in South Africa, 
and uh, these are people who 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 are mobs really they 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 will tear you up they will uh, chew you up and uh, throw you away so those are the people that I tend to anger by what I say. Um, so what, what I was actually saying, uh, if people had cared to even ask, what do you mean, Unati, instead of uh, just throwing stones at me, what I was saying is that um, the, the ANC, which is the African National Congress, which is the ruling party in South Africa, they had an opportunity to create a better life for all people in South Africa. But unfortunately, black people in South Africa are worse off because the ANC took power in 1994. Um, before 1994, I, I mean, I say this all the time when I'm being interviewed. Before 1994, um, I mean, you knew as a black person in South Africa that you cannot expect anything from the government of the day of the of that day. And so um, you, you, you basically depended on, you depended on, depended on yourself and, and uh, getting an education, going to find a job, uh, raising a family, all those good things, uh, and making sure that your family is well taken care of. You did that. But uh, post-1984, what happened is that it seems to me that the, the power to, to, to be an individual uh, was taken away as much as we were being given political power. But but now what happened is that the government came and said that we'll build you houses, uh, we'll do this, this and that for you. And uh, people forgot how to be just human, do uh, uh, normal things like uh, getting an education, going to school, uh, uh, finishing, uh, and not having babies before uh, you, you get married or before you finish uh, uh, your university. So you find a lot of young people with children, a, a number of kids, because government is going to give them a, a social grant. You can go and register and get a social grant for your child. Uh, and uh, that lasts for uh, the first uh, 18 years of a child's life. But by age 18, uh, these teenagers are already ready to have their own kids, who will then again go back to get, uh, uh, being given social grants. So the cycle of poverty is, is, is continued. And uh, one of the tragic events, uh, just on the 16th of August, was, we were uh, commemorating uh, eight years since a uh, government of the ANC uh, uh, killed, basically uh, uh, massacred uh, 34 miners at, uh, who were striking for dissenuations uh, in one of the, uh, of the provinces in South Africa. And um, not sh shortly after that, that was 2012, shortly after that, we had a young boy, six-year-old boy, who, who was killed in a school. So he, he drowned in a, a, in a pit toilet. I don't know if you know such things exist, but uh, they, well, they are in the rural areas uh, in South Africa, they don't have a, a, a much running water. So what happens is to get a, a bl ablation facility, they just dig a hole and um, they, they make a seat and that would be a toilet. So this young boy was going to the toilet because his uh, tiny body couldn't, uh, I don't know what happened, but uh, he drowned in the... So these are the things that we're still talking about in South Africa. He's not the only boy. That was in 2013. We've had uh, about two or three more young uh, uh, children drowning in human fishes uh, in South Africa. So for me to say that I feel that black people were better off under apartheid, that is what I meant. Um, I mean, we never thought that uh, the government in a democracy, the government would be so careless about people's lives but it's happening. And um, unfortunately, people still vote the same, on the, with the same patterns. And um, I don't know, uh, I don't know what people really think, because for me, um, if you're getting a certain result, but you keep doing the same thing, uh, uh, and then you, you, you're just repeating the same things, why would a government change if you're not changing them? Uh, uh, when you go to vote, they have no reason to change and improve, uh, uh, obviously. So these are the things that I talk about. These are the things that I'm passionate about. And um, I, I wish that as South Africans were more angry at uh, the current state of affairs. I mean, look at what is happening now with the lockdown since uh, the 27th of March. We've really, our economy has been on shutdown, uh, uh, basically. And from time to time, when politicians feel like it, they will, uh, a certain industry can open now, uh, the liquor industry and the tobacco industries 
have really been shut down. The tourism industry is being uh, uh, decimated as we speak. And uh, politicians don't understand how business works. You cannot switch on and off. And then when you switch on again, you're hoping that things will be back to normal. People change their, their, their buying pattern. Uh, uh, people find other things to do. I mean, about 3 million people lost jobs in South Africa. And we already uh, were struggling. We had 8 million people were looking for jobs. So 3, 3 million people lost jobs during those uh, last uh, almost five months now. And uh, no one wants to tell us why are we still under lockdown? Because uh, it's not like we were like Italy or the US or China. Uh, we were not affected like that. But um, I don't know, politicians uh, just don't care. Um, they don't think that they have a responsibility to explain to anyone uh, uh, why they take certain decisions. So uh, our economy is suffering. And um, I'm, I'm afraid if when, when they decide to lift the lockdown, a lot of damage will have been done. And uh, we'll probably go to the US to ask for help financially or go to Europe to ask for money. And um, yeah, that's that's the state of affairs. And um, if, if, if uh, this current president, people had such high hopes uh, uh, for him after uh, uh, Jacob Zuma, because he was such a corrupt man. But um, unfortunately, people are realizing now that nothing has changed really. We're just going from bad to worse in South Africa. You know, I, I often say, uh, well, I, I, I often say that, you know, um, a little pessimism is necessary for optimism. In other words, you, you can't be optimistic about everything. There are some things you have to look at and you have to say, there is no way I'm placing my trust in that. That's a bad plan. That's a bad idea. And I agree with you in that I wish people would get a little bit more angry at government, not just a particular politician, but at government itself. And that more people would say, you know what? I'm not going to fall for the, uh, for the same old line that this is the politician that's going to come along and save us, or this is the one great person that's going to make it all better. Because we've seen that story come and go. And we've Absolutely. seen the dissatisfaction remain. We've seen the various forms of oppression and injustice remain. And sometimes when people talk about, you know, economic self-sufficiency or self-reliance, that talk gets dismissed as being pessimism, you know, because, because you're not just smiling and saying, show up and vote. But I mean, that's the kind of pessimism, if that's what we want to call it, that can, that can save the world, you know, when, when we step into the light and, and decide to, to, to save ourselves. But one, one thing I wanted to ask you about this is you do a lot of teaching and, and writing in South Africa. How do people receive that? How are they responding to you there? Most people are, are quite receptive um, of, of the message that are always put out there because I strongly believe that, uh, for, for starters, I know you, you guys in the US talk a lot of, about reparations, about black people being uh, victims uh, of oppression in, in 2020 and all that nonsense. Uh, so uh, for me, I always tell people that no one owes you anything in life. If you want something, you just have to work for it like everyone else. And um, politicians, you know, politicians are so cunning. They, they, they use this word like uh, uh, you, you are a victim, racism. I mean, the, 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 the one word that's badly used today and it's actually taken, uh, it's, it, it's lost its meaning, it's racism. Uh, the word racism because everyone uh, uh, talks about racism and for everything if if a white person disagrees with a black person that's racism uh, according to you cannot you can no longer disagree with a white person these days uh, they cannot lo uh, they should accept everything that you say as a black person if they disagree then they are racist that kind of thing uh, Thomas Sowell put it, put it uh, uh, so nicely when he says that racism is like ketchup uh, you can just put it on everything <laughs> and uh, when, when you actually ask people uh, to, to produce the proof that you are racist then they say that's then the proof right that you are racist just because you ask how am I being racist here yeah. 
So uh, all these things uh, uh, have, I mean, they're just growing and growing. And if uh, people like myself uh, don't speak out, and actually, because I, I feel that it's only politicians who benefit from all these talks uh, of uh, imagined racism. Racism is something serious. But the way politicians are using it, it's like they want to divide people. And um, I mean, they're the only ones benefiting from that, not as the people. So uh, we just need to, to always be on the lookout for, for someone telling me that I need uh, reparations. I ask people, like, reparations for what? Uh, which white person owes me anything today? Uh, I mean, the past happened, guys, and um, it's not going to come back. Uh, I mean, again, I'll quote Thomas Sowell when he says that the past happened. Uh, the important thing is to make sure that uh, you, you create a future today that you will be proud of and uh, that your children will be proud of. Uh, we can no longer dwell on, on what happened. We must learn from it. Just move on and, uh, and, and continue with life. And um, that's how I, I choose to live my life anyway. And uh, obviously, no, not everyone has to subscribe to what Unati subscribes to. Uh, because, uh, again, I'm an individual. I make my own choices in life. I have my own principles and values. Uh, but I think they are just, uh, um, I mean, obviously, I would like to influence more people to think the way that I do. Um, not because I'm important or better than anyone, but because I think I think it's it's um it, it's a good way of of thinking about things. Unati, I I was wondering, um, you know, you you bring up a lot of really heavy issues, right? A lot of a lot of things that people um, feel burdened with, um, whether that's on a conscious level, whether that's on a social level, um, whether that's on an intellectual level. I know something that. Uh, you know, TK and, and what we talk about at the Revolution of One is um, is kind of helping people find their power through um, f through essentially believing in themselves, through essentially uh, knowing that they have uh, what it takes to kind of rise to the occasion. They have what it takes uh, to beat the odds. They have uh, what it takes to um, kind of pull themselves out of uh, the rut of... Um, you know, just just the, you know the mental heaviness. Um, so how how do you kind of do that in a world where um, you know a lot's going on? Um, a lot of people are pointing fingers uh, this way and that way, left and right. How do you kind of ground yourself and 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 find that personal power to to kind of overcome and and to, and to find the the places where the optimism shines bright? Mm, yes. Um, I'll go back to who do you surround yourself with? What are you reading as a young person? What are you watching? Um, if, if you are able to switch off the news, uh, I mean, you can do it with just 30 minutes of news a day. You don't need uh, the whole day of 24-hour news uh, because all they do is uh, cause alarm and unnecessary panic on, 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 on people. I mean, the lockdown has uh, caused a lot of people to be depressed more, and uh, because you you're not in touch with with with, with other people, because as human beings we need uh, we I mean we're social beings, we need other people. So uh, during the lockdown, what are you doing? Um, how are you keeping yourself busy? Um, I mean, does I, I since I stopped watching news, I found a lot of other avenues uh, of of information, uh, useful information, because there's a lot of nonsense in mainstream media that you don't need. Uh, 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 there's a lot of propaganda that is being thrown about uh, that only causes you anxiety. And uh, you don't need that. Uh, you, you just need, and if you are a parent, uh, uh, if you are a parent, make sure that, uh, because most of these things we, we, we grow up with. Uh, if in, you grew up in a home way as a young person, you're not being affirmed and uh, you're not being uh, loved the way a young person is supposed to be loved, you're not being nurtured as a, as a young person, then uh, when you grow up and you are an adult, then you become a problem, problematic uh, adult. 
uh, who, who doesn't contribute pro positively to society. That's why I strongly believe that uh, young people should hold off uh, uh, making babies while they are still pa babies themselves. Teenagers should uh, uh, find things to do instead of uh, sleeping around and all those kind of things. Because, uh, I mean, you, you, I mean, I, I, I'm trying to think now that um, if you're not getting involved in, in debate, society, debate societies, sports, music, all those good uh, things that we grew up with, as young people, if you're not getting involved there, then you want to spend your energy in negative ways. And um, I mean, there's so much to do. There's so much uh, being advertised, whether it's on Facebook. Uh, some people will say that uh, social media is negative. Social media sp uh, spreads toxicity in society. But the way that I use uh, uh, social media is uh, I make sure that I mean, if it was if it wasn't for Twitter, I wouldn't know about uh, your program. Uh, if if it wasn't for social media, I wouldn't know about fee. Uh, so uh, there's a lot of good things that you can find. And and one thing that I I, I do as well is that I make sure that uh, because you know uh, when you've been interacting with people for a, a, a while, then you get to know others uh, more than others on, on on social media, but you've never met in person. So what I do is I make sure that I meet these people that I always have great conversations with. Um, for instance, uh, just last month, I went to Johannesburg uh, for two weeks. And uh, just about every day, I make sure that I'm meeting someone from Twitter over coffee. And uh, we continue to have these conversations in person. Uh, so we sort of taking it out of, uh, of uh, uh, social media into the real life. Because there's so much that we can do. That's how you network. That's why you, that's how you grow as a person. And I've met uh, uh, people now I can call friends through that, uh, uh, through that, through doing that. And um, I mean, there's always people who want to meet because uh, I suppose I have interesting things to say. So people are interested in what I have to say, and uh, then I, I invite them to, to 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 over coffee, and we continue these uh, conversations. That's how you build a society. We have such. Um, in South Africa, we have such a, we have a society that uh, is always struggling with race relations. And um, one of the people I visited, uh, I met uh, actually when I was in Johannesburg, is uh, Steve Hoffmeyer. Uh, he's Afrikaner by uh, culture uh, and race. And um, he's one of the unfortunate people who's, who's misunderstood, I'll say. And uh, people call him a racist because uh, sometimes just because you're white in South Africa, you're called a racist. So I, I find it's unfair uh, for when you don't know a person. You've never met a person, but you've already decided they are racist. Uh, so I, I met with him. We had lunch and we had great conversations. So that's what I want to continue doing. Uh, that's the way that I want to contribute to society. Um, obviously, you know, you post pictures. <laughs> with this person who's so hated, so much hated in the country. And uh, oh, some people will congratulate, some people will have nasty things to say. And um, uh, uh, Larry Elder has a, a documentary out now in the US. Uh, it says Uncle Tom. So I'm one of those people who are called these nasty names uh, because uh, for me, that it doesn't matter if you're white or black or Indian or colored. Uh, if I want to have an, a, 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 a conversation with you, I will treat you the same way that I, t I treat uh, any other person in the black community. So, uh, I mean, those, but then uh, being called names, I suppose it's part of the, it's, it's part of the whole uh, game, uh, basically. But it doesn't deter me from doing what I want, what I choose to do on social media. And um, I think I have a lot to offer. And uh, yeah. So one of the things. And, uh, mm. Oh, sorry. My, we had a we had a delay. Continue. We had a, we had a delay. All right. No, it's fine. So you can continue. Well, one of the things you said earlier the was that we we understand people differently when we ask, "What do you mean?" instead of just reacting and saying, yeah. well, you're wrong, right? And, and, and that's exactly Absolutely. what you're getting at, just dismissing people, you know, without taking the time to get to know them. 
something that you said a, a little bit ago when, when you were talking about racism and a lot of people, politicians who try to use those talking points to exploit people. You said that racism is serious, but I, I'm paraphrasing, but many of the politicians who try to get you to trust them as the solution, that's not that's not where it is. The solution is in you and your ability to learn from the past and your ability to take charge of your life. I'm curious with, with, with the way race relations are in South Africa, with there, with there being so much tension and so much conversation about it, what would you say to people who who say, all right, all right, I, I, racism exists. I'm not gonna put my faith in politicians. I'm not just gonna call anybody and everybody a racist just because they're a different color than me. But now what? What what do I do? What, what does it mean to learn from the past and to move forward? Like like break that down in terms of practical action steps. Mm. What's me, the freedom way would, to overcome racism? Yeah, yeah. For me, it means reaching out to to someone who's different, uh, because uh, I mean we're different for reasons, uh, uh, and the fact that we we are diverse diverse nation means that. We can actually learn uh, from each other because we're just different. Uh, we, we even if we're black in South Africa, you come from a different tribe. Uh, you're not related in any way. Uh, so uh, for me, uh, reaching out to the next person, uh, uh, just um, just treating a person the way that you want to be treated, um, and and knowing that uh, you can actually learn a lot from someone from a different race or from a different tribe or from a different culture, because uh, uh, there's a lot of things I don't know about, let's say, uh, uh, Sotho or Zulu uh, uh, on the Mele or, or Afrikaans or English. Uh, uh, there's a lot of things I don't, I don't know about their culture. But if I take the first step to, to reach out to my fellow human being, and uh, I mean, Martin Luther King said that uh, he had a dream uh, uh, that uh, uh, people wouldn't be judged by the color of their skin, but the, but the content of their character. So that's what I strive for uh, every day of my life. That's what uh, that's the South Africa I, I, I am dreaming about every day. But I realize that uh, it's not going to be easy because uh, we have very powerful people in the, in the country who are mainly politicians or celebrities who choose to who choose to play with people's feelings. And uh, some people are easily influenced, uh, unfortunately, by bad, uh, by these bad uh, influences in society. So um, I always uh, want to find my space and I always will ask myself, why am I on social media? Or why am I doing uh, what, whatever I choose to do at a certain time? And um, those things keep me grounded. And uh, when I get uh, uh, trashed on, on social media, uh, I always go back uh, to asking myself, why am I doing what I'm doing? And why do I never apologize for, 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 for my thoughts? Uh, uh, because we have a lot of thought police, uh, unfortunately. Um, why, why, why am I standing up for, for, I mean, I'll stand up for anyone who's being uh, abused on social media because uh, no one has a right to do that. And we all have, uh, I mean, our constitution allows us the rights to, to, to freedom of, uh, of expression. And uh, unfortunately, that is a right current in South Africa. There's a bill that is being uh, put before parliament uh, where they want to control uh, each and everything that is being put. I mean, uh, if you have a YouTube, uh, 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 you have a YouTube channel in South Africa, politicians would now want you to go via them. You have to, to it, it has to be approved by government, uh, whatever you want to put out there. And it's ridiculous. Uh, these are the things that we, we, we have to fight for in this country. They say that uh, they fought for our freedom, but uh, these are the same people who are stealing our freedom today. So uh, uh, as much as I'm saying that people shouldn't uh, follow everything in the news, but you need to know what is happening. Uh, try to, to, for instance, to know what bills are before Parliament? Uh, how are they going to affect me as a small business owner, as a, a, a as a person, uh, as a citizen of the country? Uh, we talk in South Africa today about uh, government wanting to take people's land and not pay compensation for that. 
and um, it's wrong. Uh, they want to change the constitution, and um, so th so that it gives politicians more power over people's property. Private property is human rights, as far as I'm concerned. Uh, so if if government decides, if politicians, uh, I mean, you, you can never trust politicians. Today, they if they don't like you tomorrow, they can easily take your property away from you. So if we have weakened property rights, then uh, it's a problem for the economy. Look at what happened in Zimbabwe. Look at what happened in Venezuela. Whenever politicians are involved and give themselves all this power over people, nothing good ever comes from that. So as a young person, you just need to know what is happening in the country and uh, how can you make your voice heard? Because uh, to for politicians to decide that uh, what you put out on, on YouTube, I want first to, get, to give you approval. It means that we're not going to get this great content that we get each and every day in this country of up and coming young people because uh, mainstream media unfortunately has been disappointing to people and uh, we have a lot of young people who are now using their platforms that are available to to spread the word of freedom basically liberty individual rights property rights and all those good things that make up a society a free society so uh, i find that every day in south africa we just have to fight even for the, the most basic things really if you can't say what you want to say if you can't uh, uh, produce a show and put it out on YouTube, a uh, uh, government wants to control that even. If they don't want you to, I mean, it's just becoming more ridiculous. And this is under the ANC, a, 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 a party that says that they fought for our freedoms. I don't know what they understand by the word freedom, but for me, it's such an important, it's such an important word. And um, that's why I do what I do. And uh, I just try to, to wake people up, basically, because there's, there's a lot of uh, people who are sleepwalking out there. And um, uh, before you know it, they, they, they won't have land. They won't have uh, all these rights that we have in our constitution, because uh, uh, there's that risk now that politicians can change the constitution as they want. It happens in other parts of Africa, and uh, we don't want to see that happening in South Africa. You know, in a in a world of political I idolatry is what I'll call it, where we worship the state and we worship the saviors who speak on behalf of the state or the self-proclaimed saviors. It takes a lot of courage to be able to criticize the system of coercion. It takes a lot of courage to be able to point out that once you give away power, you don't get it back. And it may be easy to give it away when you know a person that you like will be the one that is wielding that power but if there's anything that we're guaranteed to experience in this life besides death and taxes it's politicians who will wield power in ways that we don't like and thinking Absolutely. twice about giving that power up is a, is a very important mm -hmm. thing and with all the people out there telling us over and over again vote for x vote for y it's refreshing to hear a voice that's reminding us of the bedrock principle of freedom, which is vote for yourself, vote for your potential, vote for your ability to think critically, vote for your ability to think creatively, vote for your ability to pull your own self up, rely on yourself and make things happen in the world. Vote for your ability to collaborate with other people to make good things happen. I wanna give you the final word for everybody that's listening. What's one final word of inspiration that you wanna leave the people with, Yunati? Oh. Uh, my main message these days is uh, take care of your family. Uh, we have a lot of, especially in our black families, we have a lot of uh, broken families. And uh, it, it shows itself in, in high crime levels. It shows itself in, in, in young children who grow up and are not nurtured in the way that a child uh, should be nurtured. So we just need to take care of our families. We, we just need to make them work. And that's how you build a society. And um, it, it's just a big message that I have that I carry with me every time that I, I, I have an interview with someone. Until we fix that, it doesn't matter how many problems them. Until you fix the families, it doesn't matter how many laws in the country that you have. Uh, you're not going to do anything right because the, 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 the foundation of a human being which are in the family are broken. So until we fix families, we, we're not going anywhere. Uh, and that's uh, the world over. It doesn't matter where we are in, in society. So uh, fix families, uh, uh, be self-reliant, um, 
stop trusting politicians and uh, trust yourself more. Uh, uh, build yourself, develop yourself as a young person and uh, keep learning. Uh, uh, there's a lot of uh, uh, good out there. Keep learning. Uh, what are you reading? What are you watching? And what are you doing with your time? Uh, do those things and uh, all just falls into place when you do that. You're very encouraging, very inspiring. I also want to thank you for all the support you've shown for Revolution of One. Uh, you've shared a lot of our a lot of our videos, a lot of the tweets and stuff like that. And I know there are a lot of people who wouldn't have heard of us if it were not for you. So thanks so much for for showing love and support for our project. And and thank you so much for taking the time to join us and uh, and give us a much needed reminder uh, to place greater faith in ourselves. Uh, than any politician. We appreciate you, Yunati. Yes, yes. Thanks, guys. Thanks, thanks. Bye. <laughs> Take care. Everybody that's tuning in, I'll be back tomorrow for TK's Two Cents at 12 p.m. Eastern Time. Remember, unless I say otherwise, Tuesdays, Wednesdays, and Thursdays, 12 p.m. Eastern Time, the revolution of one live stream. I'll see you tomorrow. Peace. <laughs>